So today we're going to talk a little bit about OAuth 2. This is a security protocol. And if you're new to programming, you're new to building out these crew AI projects, this is going to be a concept that's going to become more important for you to understand as you start trying to implement your projects with other services, with other applications, because this is basically how you're going to be able to access that data, access those API keys. So that's why we're going to talk about that today so that you can understand this protocol, how it works at a high level. That way, when you start making these requests for some of these access tokens you won't become frustrated you won't feel lost and you won't feel like you know it's a lot more complicated than it really is so let's get started and we're going to go over what we've been doing so far right so recently if you've been working with any Korea project you're linking it to an LLM and for that you typically needed an API key right so you had you your Korea project you would put your API key in your project and just like that, you had access to that LLM from that website. Same thing for some of these other tools, right? You would request an API key pretty much by just creating an account, logging on and creating new keys. But as you start working with some of the bigger companies that provide a lot of data for a lot of customers, it becomes a little bit more of a secure process for you to be able to connect applications to their services. And that's where OAuth 2 comes in. This is just a security protocol that is used in order to grant other applications or developers access to some of the features on those products without exposing too much sensitive data without exposing the username and password so the quickest example i can give you of oauth 2 is i'm sure you've logged into websites where it asks you to create an account and one of the options it gives you is just this one right here that says sign in with google and typically when i log into anything i think that's what people tend to use because you don't have to set up a new password new email all of that you know tedious stuff so in this process of you logging into this new application with your google credentials you're essentially granting permission for this application to have access to your name your email or pretty much whatever you approve on those permissions whenever you sign up. But again, nowhere in that authorization did you give away your password, did you give away anything else that Google didn't already know about. So that takes us to this next process right here, which is whenever you start creating more complex projects that you wanna integrate with some of these bigger applications or bigger services such as Google, Facebook, maybe if you're using CRMs like Salesforce or Go High Level, instead of just requesting an API key so that you can do API calls to pull data from this, you're going to need what's called an access token and the process of getting an access token is a little bit more complicated than simply you know just logging into an account and creating a new api key and that's what we're going to go over basically a roadmap so that you can understand the process that you're going to need to do whenever you start trying to work with some of these apis for these big tech companies so because oauth 2 is pretty standard right now this workflow of requesting access tokens has become pretty common so it's not always clearly pointed out in the documentation of some of these products that you're going to be requesting it from. So we're not going to go over any of the technical implementation of this. We're not going to request access tokens per se, but you having a clear view on what's going on is going to allow you to go through this process without feeling like you're getting stuck or without feeling like you don't understand why you need to do some of these things. So let's get started. So right off at the beginning, you have your project, right? Whether it's a Python project, Korea project, whatever it is, you wanna integrate this or you wanna allow for this to make API calls to let's say something like Google Cloud or an API from one of the Google products. So the first thing that you're gonna do when you log in there or when you start, so the first thing you need to do to start the process of being able to make API requests to a service in Google is basically you're gonna register your product. Now that's not, complicated at all it's going to be one of the most straightforward things you're going to do in things like the google console so don't think it's anything more complicated than that it's pretty much just creating a new project within you know google's cloud services but what this is going to allow is this project that you created is going to be where you basically pick what's called the scope of the project so from here you're going to decide what permissions does this project have in regards to accessing data that the users give it permission to? Is it to just read? Is it to change data in the account? That's where this is going to be defined. And that's commonly what it means when you see scopes on some of these products. The other thing your project is going to get is basically a way to identify that project as unique and, you know, identify anything that that project does. And that's where you're going to get this right here, which is your client ID and your client secret. So, Again, I want to emphasize the registering part. Basically, this kind of like 
you know, giving a driver's license or an ID to your project so that Google can clearly identify any changes, any actions that it does to any accounts or to any data within Google. So once you've created your project, this is basically where you're going to request access to the data. And this is typically where in other applications you would be taken to that. You would be taken to that Google sign on screen because, again, this is to verify that you indeed are allowing this other application to access your data. And you might be thinking, great, I created a project that have my client secret. I have my client ID. I already defined the scopes of what I want to do with the API calls. Maybe you just want to read some data. So you might be wondering, is that all I need to get my API key or rather access token? And unfortunately, it's not. So in you granting permission through this first sign on or rather this authorization access that you gave it, you're not going to be granted what's called an authorization code, which is going to be one of the most crucial parts related to you requesting your access token. But keep in mind, now you have three pieces of unique data tied to you. You have your client ID that we got earlier, your client secret, and now you have an extra piece of data, which is also unique to that particular request you just made. And that's your authorization code. So with these three pieces of data, you're now going to be able to request your access token. And if it all checks out, that's when you're going to be granted your access token. So now that you finally have your client secret, your client ID and your access token, that's what's going to allow your project or app to make API calls to pull data from some of these bigger tech products. I know the flow of this process might still seem a little bit all over the place, but trust me, if you've tried working with some of these APIs before and maybe you got frustrated because you didn't know exactly what to request, how to request it, go back to the documentation or rather just watch YouTube tutorial on how somebody is doing it and you're going to be able to more clearly see what it is that it's happening, why they're, you know, putting in these client secrets, why they're submitting this request and whatnot, why they need these kind of tokens. And it's going to be a pretty similar workflow for all of these different applications. I know it can seem a little frustrating and a little bit overwhelming, but trust me, do this a couple of times. You'll be good to go. I've talked to a lot of you throughout these past couple of days and I'm amazed at how fast y'all are progressing in the projects that you're building. And I just want to make sure you feel comfortable when you tackle some of these new challenges that might not necessarily seem like they have an obvious answer if you're not, you know, somebody that has programming experience. So that's going to be the lesson for today. Again, I appreciate all the feedback I've been getting both in the Discord group, the Facebook group, and the one-on-ones. Again, I say that at the end of every video. If there's something that you need assistance with, something you have questions about, you're more than welcome to book a call with me in your one-on-one. -on -one. Whether you're trying to integrate tools like Crew AI or other services into your business or into your projects, I'm more than happy to talk to you one-on-one -on -one so that we can discuss any questions you may have on that. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.